What's up everyone, welcome back to quest mode. If you picked up SteamWorld Quest, you're in for a treat, but it can get pretty tough, especially later in the game or if you're playing on Legend difficulty. After spending well north of 30 hours with the game, I want to share a few tips that I've picked up, especially around some devastating cards and combos that I think are easy to overlook. Now this is not a definitive list, I'm sure there are plenty of other better tips, but these are just the things that helped me get through what would have otherwise been some nearly impossible battles. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. If there's one card that I did not expect to be as helpful as it was in overcoming SteamWorld Quest's tougher duels, it was, believe it or not, Poison. Casting Poison inflicts damage on one foe for three turns, and the best part is that it inflicts damage as a proportion of your opponent's total health or strength, I'm not sure which one. In any case, huge enemies subsequently take huge damage three turns in a row. It's also particularly helpful on enemies that frequently heal themselves, which is one of the most frustrating aspects of some of the later bosses. And as a bonus tip, if you're playing with Terra and Thane, you can use Virulence to do heavy damage to multiple foes at once who also happen to be poisoned. Certain cards in SteamWorld Quest can make your opponents flinch. When an enemy flinches, including a boss, they play one less card on their next turn, which makes most enemies skip their entire turn. Similar to Poison, I didn't see the real value in doing this until I faced some tougher battles where one extra turn meant the difference between life and death. Armalee's Intercept card has a 70% chance of making opponents flinch, and it deals pretty decent damage, so it actually became one of my most frequently used attacks in the entire game. Oryx Stone Lion doesn't inflict any damage, but it does make your target flinch 100% of the time. Keep in mind that you can also use Sleep to make any opponent snooze through three straight turns. Now this is different than making your opponent flinch, and it's best used when facing more than one enemy at a time. That way you can let your sleeping opponent catch some Zs while you attack everyone else. In the late game, you can do thousands of points of damage with special skill attacks that build in power along with the amount of steam points that you've saved up. Oryx Cyclone Slash in particular deals two additional blows for every steam point you spend. That means you can strike your opponent up to 22 times if you manage to save up a full stash of steam points. Use Fixer and Arcane Detective to load up on steam points, then right before playing Cyclone Slash, cast Bushido on Oryx, which gives each of those 22 blows a 60% greater chance of dealing a critical hit. You're probably seeing where this is going. Depending on your strength and depending on what other cards you play that turn, you can deal massive damage to one enemy all in the same turn. I found Against All Odds to be one of Terra and Thane's most useful cards. It raises your entire party's dodge chance by 5 grades for one turn. This is yet another card that might seem unworthy to players who just want to deal as much damage as possible, but once you play a difficult enemy that frequently dodges your attacks, you know how effective it can be. The perfect time to play this card is when you're up against a powerful boss that saved up all of their steam points and is about to unleash a devastating attack. You probably noticed early on the importance of Copernica's Mana Barrier and Galeo's Mend to keep your party alive in tough battles. But it's Copernica's chain attack, called Barrier Field, that's an even bigger lifesaver. It gives each of your allies a Mana Barrier worth 20% of their health for up to three turns. When I was facing a particularly tough batch of enemies, I would consistently save up on Copernica's Strike and Upgrade cards just so I could cast Mana Barrier every three or four turns. Think about it, if you cast this five times in one battle, you just doubled your entire party's health for that battle without casting any extra cards. So there you have it, five quick tips that hopefully help you find even more success in SteamWorld Quest. And here are two more for good measure. Don't forget to revisit previous chapters to grind, as leveling gives you some pretty sizable stat boosts. And lastly, make sure to regularly check your enemy's elemental weaknesses. You can literally stack your deck against your opponents if you know what type of damage is going to inflict the most harm. And with that, you should be in a good position to hit the battlefield. Thanks so much for watching, and remember, if you never want to miss any of my reviews, previews, or top 10 lists, don't forget to subscribe, and until soon, we'll see you next time.